Hey everyone, welcome to the Island Uplift. Let's take a look at the history of the recorded eruptions of the La Soufre volcano on the island of St. Vincent. Although the geological record of past eruptions would consist of many eruptions occurring over a period of several millennia, the first recorded explosive eruption occurred on March 26, 1718. According to an article posted on July 5, 1718 by the English writer Daniel Defoe, an account of the eruption was relayed to him by sailors who were within the vicinity of the island. At this time in history, the island was only inhabited by Kalinago people who were also known as Carib Indians. The sailors used descriptions such as that terrible flash of fire, clashes of thunder, and ash thick as smoke, fine as dust, and solid as sand to describe the eruption. Many of the ships within the vicinity also recorded between 9 inches and 1 foot thick ashfall on board. Ashfall was also recorded in the neighboring islands of Martinique, St. Lucia, and Barbados, with as much as 4 inches of ash reported as far north as St. Kitts. The following year, in 1719, the island of St. Vincent received its first permanent European settlers in the form of French settlers in the town of Barley. This marked the beginning of in-depth exploration and study of the volcano. In 1784, then curator of the botanical gardens, Alexander Anderson, provided the first ever detailed record describing the crater of the volcano. The second recorded explosive eruption of the volcano occurred on April 30, 1812. This occurred 94 years after the 1718 eruption as well as 17 years after the death of Paramount Chief of the Garifuna, His Excellency Joseph Chateauier, and the end of the Second Carib War. The eruption was described as a very violent one, causing much destruction and killing 56 persons. As much as 10 inches of ash was recorded on the ground, with ash once again reaching neighboring islands. It was also noted that over 200 earthquakes were recorded leading up to the eruption. The eruption itself resulted in a new crater being formed to the northeast of the old crater. Now, although written records were kept by the British Parliament, the eruption was most famously documented in the form of a painting which was done by J.M.W. Turner. Turner made a painting from a sketch that was made by Hugh Perry Keane, a lawyer and plantation owner who lived in St. Vincent at that time. About two years after the 1812 eruption, on January 9, 1814, a small eruption occurred where rocks were thrown half a kilometer out of the crater. Then, in 1880, the water in the crater began to increase in temperature, resulting in a scorching of the vegetation that surrounded the crater. In the year 1898, 86 years after the 1812 eruption, St. Vincent was devastated by the passage of the 1898 Windward Island hurricane. This hurricane destroyed the villages of Richmond, Walibu, Chateaubelle, Cumberland, and Barley, taking over 300 human lives on the island. Just four years after this destructive event, the volcano erupted again on May 7, 1902, exactly 90 years since the events of the 1812 eruption. To date, the 1902 eruption is still known as the volcano's most destructive eruption episode. The eruption resulted in the death of approximately 1,680 persons, making it the 19th deadliest volcanic eruption in recorded human history. Now, although activity at the volcano continued into 1903, the main component of the eruption was the descent of the Great Black Cloud, a pyroclastic flow that occurred on May 7th. This cloud of ash, 
rock, heat, and sulfuric gases decimated the communities of Chateau Belay and Richmond, both of which were still in the rebuilding process from the effects of the 1898 hurricane. Fancy, Ovia, Orange Hill, Turema, Sandy Bay, Langley Park, and Georgetown were also significantly damaged. Most of the lives lost were Kalinago descendants who lived in the northern communities, including the settlement of Mon Ronde, just north of Richmond Estate. In 1805, the British legislature on the island had granted a pardon to Caribs that had not surrendered after the events of the Second Carib War. The pardon allocated 230 acres of land for them to live on at Monrond on the conditions that the Caribs did not alienate it or grow sugar on it. The destruction of this community 97 years later in 1902 signaled the destruction of the Caribbean's then known largest community of Kalinago people. The 1902 eruption also destroyed much of the island's biodiversity, including much of the island's native forests. The 1898 hurricane and 1902 volcanic eruption destroyed so much of the island's native forests that today, St. Vincent is estimated to have little to none of its original native trees and forest areas remaining. The eruption also killed much of the island's fauna, with dead St. Vincent parrots found along the island's northern coastline. The volcano remained inactive for another 68 years until October 31, 1971. Unlike the previous eruptions, this was not an explosive but rather an effusive eruption with magma and gases being released within the crater. Then, eight years later, on Good Friday, April 13, 1979, an explosive eruption occurred once again. The eruption was volcanian in nature, producing incandescent fragments of new viscous lava. Steam and tephra from the volcano reach as high as 12 miles or 20 kilometers, causing significant ashfall in the neighboring islands. No human lives were lost as a result of the eruption. However, over 20,000 persons had to be evacuated to the south of the island. Only 63 evacuation centers were airmarked for these individuals, which resulted in sanitary issues at these centers. Nevertheless, effective scientific monitoring and a rapid evacuation response by the government helped to save many lives. In the midst of disaster, a step in the right direction was made. On December 29, 2020, Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Ralph Gonsalves held an emergency press conference updating the Vincentian public on activity that was being monitored at the La Soufre volcano. It was determined by the University of the West Indies Seismic Research Center, led by famed Vincentian geologist Professor Richard Robinson, that an effusive eruption was occurring within the volcano's crater. The volcano is currently being monitored and plans are being put in place in case it turns into another explosive eruption. To what extent has the mountain risen from its slumber? How long will it stay awake? We are still yet to find out.